<laughs> when you think of the kingdom and you think of hip hop, you think of Captain Street Center, Smith Street, the Bricks, Moore School, 800 Crew, 900 Crew, Justice Crew, HVC, Storm City, BSE, Whole Boys, GMCs, Fatal Force, Masterminding them, South Hills Mall, the Roller Rink, all the monumental spots, right? Them is kingdom Right. Now, when you come back to the kingdom, you think about Catherine Street and Jimmy at the door. Hey, don't come in here with that bus here. Get my dad and dad around here. And all that. And Armstrong used to be the promoter back then from the Bronx. Armstrong was a big black nigga, like 300 pound dude. He was a bald head nigga with a sheep gray, green sheep skin. That shit might have been gray, but it was so. Grimy looking and was look green. So Armstrong was responsible for bringing like uh Shy Rock and him and um Crash Crew and he bought he, he bought Flash and them up here. Also Mastodon and Mad Groups. This is way before Ram and them even thought about even getting into the game. Steve Bruce, we never heard of them do that at the time, right? This is you know City dudes that was coming from the wrong up here. Out here, bringing, bringing the, the, the real street entertainment and all that. Like, tell Rob, hey, Rob, tell me. That's how that this is Doug Fresh and um, Slick Rick when it was fresh out the gate, like Run DMC, you know. Run, running them was the only major group that didn't come to Catherine Street because they were just too big. Running them was too big for that, you know. In my opinion, Doug Fresh and Slick Rick was too big for that, but there was, there was, from, there was on the concrete, dude. You know what I mean? They they weren't afraid to go nowhere. You know what I mean? They they plugged the equipment up and Jill Will Barry B, you know, they was gonna give it to you. And and, and Rick was just like, you know what I mean? He had the illest flow and Doug Fresh was just phenomenal. You know, to this day, Doug Fresh is still one of the best entertainers, you know? So in addition to that, like there was party goers from the kingdom that the parties was not gonna happen in five more for less. In the building, right? And the folks that was usually in the building on the on the on the other side of like all the during that time period, most of the world came from one of the pretty close tough worlds. You know I mean? For some reason that's just how it felt like I mean, I mean some of y'all might be like different from that, but in my opinion, you know what I mean? We was from up there, we just trying to hide top of the worlds. You know what I mean? So on the other side of that, like the party party goes was was there wasn't a party unless I'm acting. Or the uh, artillery. A lot of them on both sides, and they party people. When they were getting in the party, they all get on the set, you know what I mean? Smile, God, and the rest of them, you know what I mean? And Dodos and all the other records and the rest of that, they were very dominant, you know, and the party was always popping. So it was like, it's famous. But the other side of that was, it was just, that was just happening. Between 86 and uh, 88 is when it really, really, really took off. Whenever that Run DMC record came out with Sucker MCs on it, the first one on the full bar record, that's when it jumped off, jumped off, and jumped off out here. You know what I'm saying? Because at that point in time, we had mad DJs, we had a lot of groups and stuff. And it wasn't just like where you would go to a party and the nigga would just get on the turntables and, oh, so and so D Day, and they're gonna do some blends and fantasy. It wasn't even like that then. You know? If you was rocking and you had a crew, and each DJ had a crew that had MCs, not niggas that just rapped on records and, and um, made tapes and shit. Every party was a performance. You know, some other parties was were, were uh, promoted better and had um, big promotion and had headliners that were with artists with records out already. But for the most part, it was strictly every time we turned that equipment on, it was somebody rocking. And like one of my favorite dudes is this dude named Easy L, Rick Harris. He was from Martin Luther King. Now Rick Harris was a unique character when it came to this hip hop stuff from this area because he was like he, he rapped and he DJ and he just didn't DJ. This thing was nice, B. I mean like like if you ever uh, seen like the um Grand Wizard Theodores and the uh, um 
DJ Scratches of the world. This is even before DJ Scratch and all, all the Grandmaster Flashes and 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 um and all them type of DJ superhero niggas on the turntables. Like um, so, Doctor Rock and them, Doctor Shock and and and, and, and them niggas, the type of niggas on the turntables. Beat. The only niggas from out here that was really with that type of style of of, of hip hop at that time would have been Easy L, Rick Harris, and Mastermind was one of them dudes most definitely. And Kid Quick was a last night change it all type of type of dude. He that was that was his signature right there. He's chopped the shit out of that. Smooth was a DJ. His name is Smooth. The nigga did blend and shit like that. You know. Now I'm just talking about niggas from on our side of the bridge. But then you had other niggas too, like Kid Nice and you had like, Jay Bowles type of niggas. And then you had the Joey T's. You know what I mean? And Joey T's are superhero niggas on the train, like the John Brashes and the rest of them dudes like that. You know what I'm saying? You had the LMC from different boroughs too. Like, you had the Kid Woods and, and uh, another um, thing from the Cross out there. Uh, Kool Aid. Kool Aid was an ill nigga, B. You know what I mean? Kool Aid was an ill nigga and he was a cool dude. Then you had the Charles and Chills. It was Bob Bates and them man. You know what I mean? Kid Lights was on. You know what I mean? Too wide and high. You know what I mean? So, hip hop was a cool thing. Music gave us a passport to get us to different places and we were on the next And how come they stand on the long But now I'm rushing on that On this side of the river You know what I'm saying So like Hip hop was a good thing It bridged a lot of gaps And, 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 and like um, Once they consider burn down It wasn't shit around there no more It was like that, Yeah after school program And after the life Like it was, it was, The YMC was open uh, VA was open At that point And probably that was the last time That it was functional You know And it didn't cost no money to sign up, but Little League didn't cost no money to sign up, and the hottest ticket in the town was CYO, if you could get down with that, but, you know, they only took like two non-Christians per team, so, you know, we could get there before some other niggas got there, and it wasn't going to be down with that, but that was a good program, and we had PAL, and we had the DK Rockers, just that every Saturday we used to go over to um, Smith School, and we were going out, them, them, those, that's going to get so deep, and, uh, and, and um, all of that going on in the era when there wasn't only nice and, and rapping and wasn't only cool niggas on the concrete, but there was nice and sports too. You know what I'm saying? So like, and then on another like back then there was a lot of in our era when the shit switched over. Cause we little younger than than Mastermind and on and everybody. You know, it didn't have a 900 crew, yeah, 800 crew, just a crew, and the rest of them. Now the difference between these crews was like. They, 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 it wasn't like you no know, any gang affiliation or anything like that. Did, did these niggas have issues with each other? Not so much the musical dudes, but like the Justice Crew and, 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 and they were that was a different kind of shit. Like they were like the superheroes of the North Side. Like it was more moving. So like two little dudes and we didn't really have to worry about people from the outside neighborhood or older guys giving us any problem or like trying to take our basketball and run us off the court and nothing like that because we had the Justice School there. So we were with those things like Howl Shell and Moats and Dama and Doug Cohen and, and them. You know what I mean? And they weren't vigilantes or nothing. They, they protected the group that was younger than them. They, they made sure we was good out there. <laughs>